Hi folks, Jeff Sengstack here. I want to show you how to record a narration inside Premiere Pro. I've got this empty project set up with no assets, uh, nothing on the timeline, so uh, we're just going to record a narration straight without looking at any images or clips. But you could have images or clips here in the timeline and record your narration as the playhead went along. You could see your images here and say something about them, uh, which is not uncommon. But we'll just do it straight here as if uh, we're just recording a narration from a script. The way you do that is by uh, working inside the audio mixer. And the audio mixer is in this panel, in this frame, I should say. Panels are here, frames contain panels. And there's the tab for the audio mixer. If you don't see the tab or you, don't, you can't locate it anywhere inside the interface, just go to Window, Audio Mixer, and then select the, uh, the sequence that you're working on, and that'll open it up. Now what I did in this particular case is I loaded up three different kinds of audio tracks, the three different kinds of tracks that are available inside Premiere Pro. This top one here is a stereo track. You can, t you can tell it's got a little double speaker icon telling you it's stereo. And inside the mixer you can see it has two channels, left and right. The next track is a monaural. You can see it's a little single speaker icon inside the uh, timeline and it has only one channel, which you'd expect from monaural. And then finally, the last track down here is 5.1, which is, which is in fact six channels, uh, five channels plus a, a base subwoofer channel. Uh, you can't record the narration to the 5.1 uh, uh, track, but you can to either stereo or mono. And if you choose stereo or mono, you can, even if you're just using a microphone that's a mono channel microphone, uh, it'll record two equal channels here in the stereo and one channel here in mono. But the goal here is to record a narration with a single monaural microphone, so we'll stick with the monaural channel here. The way you set up your uh, recorder is to click on this button here, which is called the Enable Track for Recording. I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to get an error message. The error message says that my current audio hardware selection does not have any input channels, and please use Preferences Audio Hardware to correct this problem. That's because I haven't set up my audio yet, so I'll click OK here, and we'll go to Preferences. Now, in Windows, Preferences is under Edits, Preferences, and on the Mac it's under Adobe Premiere Pro preferences. In any case, we'll go to Preferences, Audio Hardware, click on that, and the options are few here. Just pick your device. Right now it's under Windows Sound, but I'm going to go to the, hard, the hardware card that I've got inside my machine, which is a creative card. ASIO is an audio standard, so I'll just click on that, and that now tells Premiere to use this card, which is where it's going to find the input from my microphone. And now if I click on this little button, all is well. I get this little drop-down list here that says, you know, which channel do you want to use? Front left, front right, rear left, rear right, etc. And the channels that will work for recording audio um, are maybe different from one card to the next, but we'll go with front left here. Okay, now we've enabled it for recording. The next thing to do is to turn on the recording. So that's this little button down here. It's this sort of multi-step process to get going here. We've enabled it. Now we say, okay, we're ready to record it. Click that. Nothing's happening, and you just sort of expect to see like a bouncing needle here as I talk, but that doesn't work that way inside Premiere. I wish that it did, but it doesn't. Nevertheless, my audio is going in. I, I know that it is. Now, if I start recording by clicking this play button, I'm going to get some horrible feedback because this track is not muted. So the audio from the track will go in and then start circulating around, eventually to the point where I get this horrible pitch, Woo, this high-pitched whine. So I need to mute my track by clicking on this little speaker icon there to turn off the speaker. So now everything's ready. Now if I had audio in the other tracks, let's say music or another narration or sound effects or just sound from uh, video clips, then that sound would be recorded too. So you need to mute the other tracks that you're working on just to make sure that the audio from those tracks doesn't show up inside your narration. In this case I have no audio there so I don't need to, I don't need to mute these guys but that's a good practice if you've got audio on the other tracks to mute them as well. So now we're ready to rock and roll. I got the, everything set up. Enabled, muted, record button going, and now when I click play, it'll start recording. You can see the current time indicator is moving forward, but you don't see anything else. It's as if nothing's happening. What's going wrong here? But you are recording. Things are happening. And what's going on is that in the background we're making this recording. I can, I'll show it to you in a second. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And now we're done. And when you're done, you can press the space bar or click this little stop button here. And what happens is that an audio clip now shows up in that track and up here in the project panel, and has now been stored inside the folder where your project is stored. So for example, there is this new audio track that's now showing up 
inside this uh, folder where my this keyframe demo project is stored. And it's called Audio 2 by default. Audio 2 because it was recorded on track 2. The subsequent one, if I record another clip, now it'll be 2.1, things like that. So that's why. That's how the naming convention works. You can always change it later. And now let's take a look at it. I'll open it up inside the source monitor. Double click it. And there's my audio. You can see the audio waves. And we'll just uh, play that back just to sort of prove that I really just did this. But you don't see anything else. It's as if nothing's happening. What's going wrong here? But you are recording. Things are happening. There you go. So I just now recorded to this track. And I can, just as with any clip, I can say, okay, you know, I didn't really line it up right. I can move it around. Or I can, if I want to get rid of stuff at the beginning, I could trim away the beginning. Things like that. It works like any other clip. So that's how you record a narration using Premiere Pro.